Costa Rica, pristine rainforests, gorgeous beaches, a tourist paradise, a country with no military, one of Central America's strongest democracies. But times may be changing. Last year, Costa Ricans voted into office a man fashioned in the mold of Donald Trump, an outsider who promised to set the country right after years of failed government promises, supposed corruption, and rising poverty and unemployment. President Rodrigo Chavez studied economics at The Ohio State University and worked for nearly three decades at the World Bank. Ahead of his election last year, he was nearly unheard of, but like many far-right leaders, social media helped lift him to the fore. I would have not been president of my country had it not been for social media. I had the traditional media against me. Absolutely, still. Well, so what we need to realize, ladies and gentlemen, is that the rules of the game within democracy, the bounds changed. And we cannot pretend that the old institutions and so on is going to maintain what we like. In office, Chavez has attacked his political opponents, focusing particularly on the media and universities. He's pushed conspiracy theories and fake news. And as of late June, he had the fourth highest approval rating of any public official in the world, with 71%. Mauricio Aguero Segura is a taxi driver in the Costa Rican capital of San Jose who voted for the president. Rodrigo Chavez's high approval is second in Latin America only to this man, Nayib Bukele, El Salvador's firebrand millennial president and social media sensation who has also fashioned himself in the vein of Donald Trump. Since Bukele's election in 2019, he has consolidated unprecedented power. He stacked the courts in his favor, won an overwhelming majority in Congress. He's pushing for an unconstitutional bid to run for re-election, and he's redrawing municipalities in the hopes of amassing ever more allies and power. He's also ruled with an iron fist. Bukele's controversial crackdown on El Salvador's gangs has won him tremendous support. He's jailed almost 70,000 people under a state of exception that has lasted for the last year and a half. The country is safer than it's ever been. But thousands of innocent people have been caught up in the dragnet. They've been jailed without due process and are languishing in prisons. Hundreds have died. Family members of the detained are calling the Bukele government a dictatorship. And the Bukele model of fighting crime is being exported abroad. In neighboring Honduras, Xiomara Castro made history last year by becoming the first woman to be elected president, and she won running on the leftist ticket of the Liberty and Refoundation Party. But Castro has since instituted her own state of exception to battle gangs and criminality, even announcing plans to build the Western Hemisphere's only island prison colony. Este gobierno del socialismo democrático le declara la guerra a la extorsión. Le declaramos la guerra a la corrupción, a la impunidad y al narcotráfico. Costa Rica's Rodrigo Chavez has also promised to fight crime with force if necessary. Costa Rica has not traditionally been a violent place. The country doesn't even have a military. It was dissolved in 1948. But levels of violent crime are on the rise. The number of cases rose by 40% just over the last year. Nunca habíamos tenido los niveles de violencia que hoy tenemos en el país y se debe a mi juicio eh, y de muchos anal muchos expertos eh, se debe justamente en primer lugar a el, la persistencia del desempleo. But unlike El Salvador's Bukele, crime is only one area of focus for Rodrigo Chavez. Él sabía que lo único que le interesaba al salvadoreño era la bendita seguridad. Sí. Y en eso es lo que se ha concentrado, Exacto. ¿verdad? Entonces él sí tuvo, digamos, un tema 
que no lo tenemos acá, ¿verdad? Y, o que son varios temas, ¿verdad? Entonces, que él de alguna forma tiene que articularse, le dificulta más. Among those many issues, the economy, fighting so-called corruption, immigration and gutting public services. The current president is not, he's a far-right populist just like Bukele, but he's closer to Trump in the sense that he doesn't, uh, or so far he has not made security and, and, and crime his main priority. In terms of a policy agenda, he looks a lot more like Trump, uh, and it has to do a lot with his alliances. Um, given that Costa Rica doesn't have an army, it's also difficult for him to do something like Bukele. That doesn't mean that he's not willing to. He has openly said in interviews that he cannot guarantee that democracy would survive, uh, you know, if, 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 the, if, the, if criminality or violence rises up. He, he has said he cannot guarantee that uh, democracy would survive the end of his term, which is very concerning. This is unprecedented, right? Like, we have never had a president say that out loud in modern history. Hay que atrapar, capturar, aprender juzgar y encarcelar a los cabecillas. Y esto nos va a ayudar mucho esta ley en esto. But in terms of policy priorities, he's closer to Trump because of his alliances. Uh, he's, he's allied with uh, libertarians and evangelicals, just like Trump in the U.S. So a lot of the things that he's trying to do, his policies, um, are in the direction of defunding the welfare state. Uh, cutting education, uh, funding for education, funding for uh, social security, for health. In June, students and teachers marched across the capital in defense of public education. Las universidades que hemos sido históricamente la conciencia crítica de las sociedades hoy están sistemáticamente siendo atacadas por un líder autor, uh, autócrata autoritario como el señor Rodrigo Chávez. Y es ahí en donde uno piensa hasta dónde puede llegar si todavía le quedan casi tres años de gobierno, ¿verdad? Chávez does not have a congressional majority, nor does he control the courts, but he's flexing his muscles as president and experts are concerned. So you see that there is a lot of symbolic violence in this, in this government. In terms of communications, the, I, I would say that he's copying some of the strategies that Bukele has implemented in El Salvador, for example, uh, he's using a lot of trolls and uh, fake accounts on social media, at least uh, allegedly, right? Like he's allegedly using a lot of his uh, uh, technologies to intimidate people online, to intimidate his opponents. The future is uncertain, but Chavez's surprising election and his style of governing is a clear sign that the far right wave across the globe is far from over. And it's washed into even the most unexpected places like Costa Rica. For The Real News, I'm Michael Fox. Thank you so much for watching The Real News Network, where we lift up the voices, stories, and struggles that you care about most. And we need your help to keep doing this work. So please, tap your screen now, subscribe, and donate to The Real News Network. Solidarity forever.